dear brothers and sisters in christ this is an appreciable attempt on the part of the zero malangara catholic church to get for india to reflect on and to promote the life and vision of the true legend of malangara the servant of god archbishop marivanius his life and vision still inspire us in all the places of matters today i am asked to share with you on the topic the eucharistic vision of marivanius Before entering into the topic, I want to mention the sits in Leven of the social context in which this Eucharistic vision evolved. The early 20th century was marked by an urgent need for a spiritual revival in the Malangara Orthodox Church. Lawsuits and other disputes thwarted the peaceful and spiritual atmosphere of the church. The dispute over authority between the supporters of the Metropolitan the supporters of patriarch were continuing in the malangara church during that period due to the continuous internal conflicts and litigations in the church the people lost their spiritual fervor and their faith became cold and lifeless marivanius was aware of this critical situation of his mother church which inspired him to pursue opportunities to uplift the spiritual condition of the orthodox christian faith Marivanius was aware that the Eucharistic celebration was seen as a foundation and very center of all Catholic devotion. He was impressed by the spiritual progress of the Catholics of Kerala, especially the Palayago Syrian Christians. Their spiritual growth was deeply rooted in the Eucharistic faith. Whereas in the Orthodox Church, the faithful received Holy Communion rather rarely. The legal minimum of once per year was observed by most usually on holy thirst during his seminary life itself marivanius prepared for a spiritual revival in the church by writing sermons and preaching retreats understanding this critical condition of the mother church as a shamasan he moved from parish to parish to promote catechesis on different sacraments before his ordination to the priesthood Marivanius was called Udashashamasan due to his enthusiasm to teach the faithful about the sacraments especially the Eucharist. Marivanius had a great devotion to the Holy Eucharist. He said, "We can offer to God no greater honor than worthily participating in the holy sacrifice." In his book Love of God, he says, "Holy Kurban is the greatest sign of God's love towards mankind." The Orthodox Church shares the same faith in the Eucharistic faith as the Catholic Church. One of the reasons that actually persuaded Marivanius to embrace the Catholic Church was that the Eucharistic faith is strongly guarded and devotedly practiced in the Catholic Church. Marivanius' devotion to the Eucharist was especially noticeable in the manner in which he celebrated Holy Communion. With regard to the celebration of Holy Kurbano, it is attested that people from miles away gathered to attend the liturgical services beautifully performed by Marivanius. Even in the wilderness of Perinat, where his monastery was located, people crowded to take part in his Eucharistic celebrations and other liturgical celebrations which were exquisitely performed. How did Marivanius Eucharistic vision led him to communion with the Catholic Church Full communion with the Catholic Church involves a common celebration of the Lord's Supper The concept of communion of churches is anchored in the holy sacrament of Holy Eucharist Pope Benedict XVI says The church is not born as a simple federation of communities The birth begins with the one bread with the one lord she becomes one not through a centralized government but through a common center open to all because it constantly draws its origin from a single lord who transforms her by means of the one bread that is the eucharist into one body so the unity of the church is needed for the true celebration of the lord's supper Separation from the body of Christ was considered a great sin by Marivanius. His precise conviction 
and mission on the Eucharist led him to communion with the Universal Catholic Church. Marivanius pioneered many renovations in the church, including the Divine Eucharist. One of these renovations was the use of vernacular language in the liturgy. The priests in the Malangara church previously celebrated Holy Kurbano in Syriac only. In 1990, Marivanius translated Syria Taksa into Malayalam and began celebrating Holy Kurbano in Malayalam so that the people could understand Holy Kurbano with ease and participate fully. In the Latin Catholic Church, the priests were allowed to celebrate Holy Eucharist, the Latin language only. The Latin Church, only after the Second Vatican Council, that is, after 1965, permission was given to the local churches to celebrate Mass in the vernacular languages. Another renovation was the institution of daily Holy Kurbano. The Orthodox churches, Holy Kurbano was celebrated only on Sundays and on special days of importance. Daily Holy Kurbano was not part of their tradition. However, Marivanius, while he was in Perinad Mundanmala, promoted the daily celebration of the Holy Kurbano and encouraged all people, both young and old, to attend daily Holy Kurbano. The monastic rule, he wrote, on all days, after the morning office, a divine liturgy shall be celebrated at which the brothers who are not priests shall assist. A divine liturgy with more solemnity shall be celebrated on Sundays and on important feast days. Why did Marivanius promote daily celebration of the Holy Kurban? He said, if anyone wants to remain in true devotion or to grow spiritually, he has to receive Holy Kurban daily. This is inevitable to grow in sanctity. He has to rectify his life so as to receive Holy Kurbano every day. Marivanius illustrated the relation between the sacrament of penance and Holy Kurbano using a simple metaphor, Kulim Unum, a bath and a banquet. For spiritual growth, one has to receive Holy Kurbano daily and in the same way, one has to examine his life daily. He ought to wash himself in repentance. For that, he admonished that one should make his confession every week. Another notable change he brought in the liturgical tradition is the adoration of the blessed sacrament. Preservation of the sacrament for Eucharistic adoration was prohibited in the Orthodox Church. It could be reserved in case of need for the sick only. Let us see what Marivanius taught about adoration of the blessed sacrament. In his book, Holy Purbono, he states regarding adoration. It is ought to bow down before the Holy Kurbano and, and to worship and adore Jesus, the Messiah, who abides in the Holy Kurbano. It ought to be done so. To the Christian, is it idolatry to prostrate before the Holy Kurbano and adore and worship it? He responded that since prostrating and adoring before the Holy Kurbano is prostrating and adoring Jesus is not idolatry, but it is befitting to the glory of God an unacceptable divine worship to God. He was not antipathetic to various traditions of the Western Church. Marivanius wrote a book on the Divine Eucharist called The Holy Kurbana. This book, drafted in the form of a conversation, is intended to be an aid for the monastics to better understand the Holy Kurbana. This is the most important book for a proper understanding of Marivanius' understanding on the Eucharist. Strikingly, the theology of the Eucharist that Marivanius shared in this book is in harmony with the theology of the Catholic Church. This book was written in 1925 while Marivanius was still in the Orthodox Church. In this book, Marivanius listed 25 names of the Eucharist and their explanations. The following names you can see in that book. Kurbono, Kudasha, the Mystery of Life, Emmanuel, Holy Communion, the Mystery, the Lamb, the Pasch or Passover, the Bread of the Presence, the Heavenly Manna, the Heavenly Table, the Sweet Fruit, the Fruit of Life, the Lord's Supper, Taste Quenching Drink, the First Fruit, the Firstborn, the Eucharist, 
the purifying burning coal the sacrifice of atonement the free will offering the memorial of our lord the chalice of salvation the liturgy the perfection of perfections some of these names were already in use and other names he discovered from syriac documents this shows his special interest and devotion to the holy book marivanius differentiates the eucharistic bread used in the eastern traditions and western traditions in the oriental churches hamira or leavened bread made of wheat flour is used for celebrating holy kurban whereas patira or unleavened bread is used in the latin church the wine used should be fermented juice of the grapes fruits like in most liturgical rites water should be added to the wine however in the armenian rite wine without mixing water is consecrated marivanus told that the lord instituted holy kurbana for two purposes first one to celebrate forever the memory of the lord in the form of his sacrifice second one to give us the holiness and grace which the lord merited for us through his sacrifice let us see how marivanus perceived the most important topic in the eucharistic theology namely the real presence of jesus in the eucharist there were lot of differences of opinion regarding the presence of christ in the eucharist in different churches and denominations many theories and theologies developed on this topic actually the real presence of jesus in the eucharist is an inexhaustible mystery that the church can never fully explain in words In order to explain the real presence of Jesus in bread and wine of the Eucharist, the Catholic Church explains it using philosophical terms, substance and accidents. In the act of consecration during the Eucharist, the substance of the bread and wine is changed by the power of the Holy Spirit into the substance of the body and blood of Christ. The mysterious change of the reality of the bread and wine began to be called transubstantiation in the catholic church this terminology is used to explain the real presence of christ in the eucharist in the orthodox church the bread and wine are believed to become the genuine body and blood of christ through the operation of the holy spirit however the orthodox church never described exactly how and when this occurs as it was formulated in the catholic church The Orthodox Church simply states that it is a mystery. Marivanius was aware of the theory of transubstantiation, but he remained silent about it. He describes this change in his own terms. There are two parts for any sacrament. There are an internal invisible and an external visible parts. In the Holy Corpono, the external visible part is a bread and wine an internal invisible part is a sacred body and blood of jesus christ although marivanius does not use any philosophical terms to explain how this change takes place in the sacrament he was convinced of the change that happens in the eucharistic celebration in harmony with the syriac tradition marivanius used expressions like is formed and it becomes and makes etc to illustrate the idea of change on one occasion as answer to the question how the bread and wine become the body and blood of jesus he answered by saying by the action of the holy spirit the holy body and holy blood of christ was formed in the bread and wine designating the prayer of epiclesis used in his church marivanius indicated the real change in the bread and wine This is how the prayer reads May the Holy Spirit descend upon and make this bread the life-giving redeeming body the true body of our God the Christ In his book Marivanius qualifies Holy Kurban as a sacrifice and he explained about the sacrificial nature of Holy Kurban the sacrifice of Jesus the Messiah which was completed through his death on the cross and his ascension is being offered by Jesus the Messiah 
eternally before God the Father in heaven. All that God does has an eternal impact. The church on earth, in union with Jesus the Messiah, joins this eternal everlasting sacrifice in heaven in offering the sacrifice of Jesus the Messiah before God the Father. Through the Holy Quran, the Holy Church participates in the eternal sacrifice in heaven and offers before God the Father the sacrifice of Jesus along with Jesus the High Priest. We believe the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross is an eternal sacrifice that does not come to an end. The reality of this sacrifice transcends time and space. I would like to conclude this discussion. Marivanius had a deep faith in the Holy Quran, perfectly in accord with the teachings of the fathers of the Church of the Syrian tradition, he developed a sound Eucharistic theology based on the liturgy of the Syro Malankara Church. It is noteworthy that Marivanius had an originality of his own, which is very much rooted in the Oriental tradition and very much in line with the Catholic faith. I express my gratitude to Reverend Father Matthew Kandathil and all his collaborators for having chosen me to reflect on the vital contributions of the servant of God, Archbishop Mari Banyos, the Divine Liturgy of the Syro Malangara Catholic Church. Thank you.